So I still remember when I was 10, when I realized that I did not fit into the system. Somehow, I was not inspired, I was not motivated. But was it me? Did I did not want to learn? Well, not at all. I was fascinated by everything around me in the world, and I wanted to know every single detail. But I discovered that if I sneaked home from school early and I started learning myself and making notes, that I could learn 10 times faster, um, that I still had the highest grade of the school, and that I had more spare time. So why do I share this with you? Well, it shows that the educational system did not fit my needs. And I'm sure that many of you have similar experiences. Think about all those stories from those dropouts, those geniuses that changed our world. And we have Steve Jobs, Jack Ma, Thomas Edison. They changed the world. So that made me wonder, where do we educate people for? They're the young leaders of tomorrow, but we educate them to be all the same. And what is that good for? And if we now look around us, there are more demotivated children than we've ever seen. We're even starting to give them all kinds of names, of disorders, right? But the truth is, no child is born demotivated. We all have our fascination with the world. We are all inspired by things that truly matter to us. I'm born and raised in a medical family specialized in genetics, and I've witnessed firsthand when I was a little girl that there is more knowledge to save lives and that people are currently dying because of a lack of access to life-saving information. When I was sitting in my pyjamas, listening to my father, telling me stories about all his families with six children who then eventually died, I was intrigued by the sentence, if only we had known, if only we had known, we could have prevented this. So as a child, I start thinking, but why? Why if there's more knowledge? Why don't we use this? And then my father explained me that we now have new knowledge about DNA, where we can save millions of lives. And that with this new knowledge about DNA, what we can do is, for example, match patients with cancer to personalized treatments and save their lives. And it was fascinating knowing this. And for me, that was the start of a personal journey to create a future where every human can enter life-saving information. So I start studying biomedical sciences. Um, I uh, specialized further at the age of 23 as a genetic scientist uh, in neuroscience and cognition. I performed stem cell research at Harvard. I specialized further in a second degree in philosophy. I had honors in business. I worked at the World Health Organization in Geneva and then moved to China to work at Peking University. Until one day in 2016, when I realized I'm seeing a future in front of me and I need to start building that future myself. In this future, we can save all those lives. And what we do is we can connect life-saving information to people who need it, based on their DNA. And that made me wonder, standing here today, if we can do this to personalize healthcare, can we apply the same principles to personalize education? Would that work? Can we improve lives, change lives, by personalizing education? Well, let me tell you something about DNA. DNA is a code inside all our cells 
consisting of three billion letters, made of four letters of the alphabet, ATCGs. And this code informs us about our health, how we look, it tells something about our personality, but also about how we learn. So, for example, take a memory system. The way our memory systems work, there are tens and thousands of manners how this is hardwired in all of us. It's all different. So some of us need to hear something three times before they remember. And maybe you need to write it down so better process it. And maybe you want to visualize it and have a sound in the back. While you might prefer absolute silence when studying. And then there are some of us who has brilliant focus. And maybe, maybe you can focus for 60 minutes, but your neighbor only for three. So that means, actually, that half of you are still are not listening anymore to me. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. And how, so in science, how that works, it's, we call it nature versus nurture. And nature is our DNA. It, it determines who we are and how we, work, how we learn. It, it's very personal. And then we have nature. And nature are the environmental influences. And that's particularly important for the working mechanism of the brain. Because with the brain, it can very well adapt to changes in our environments. And this is a process we call plasticity. And how this works is actually really simple. If children are demotivated, the amount of cells in our brain decrease and the connections made between cells are less. If children, or we, are very motivated, what happens in the brain is we make new cells and those make all new kinds of connections. So, that's very important to understand working in the field of education. Because if education does not fit the personal blueprint of a child, the chances are very likely that the child becomes demotivated, it will start staring out of the window, it will not remember what you're telling him or her. The memory system will not work, so it does not remember, and and make less connections. So in that way, it has a profound effect on the development of a child. So if we don't personalize education, they can have negative influences on a lot of children. So that's what happens if we force a one-size-fits-all approach. It suits a few, but it is suboptimal to most. And compare this again with healthcare. It's very interesting, because if we have a patient, we don't give every patient the same pill, right? If we do that, some patients will get terrible sick, and they might even die. So why do we do this with education? So let's talk about the future of education. How can we shape the future of personalized education? Well, and I think that the solution is actually very simple. I think we should listen to the children. We should listen to what inspires them. What are their dreams? What is their fascination with the world? What do they want to learn? And that's actually what we already do in business. We, we don't do otherwise. We don't build a business for ourselves, but we build a business because we identify a need in the market and we try to maximize the value for the consumer. So with education, a child is a consumer of education. So we need to listen 
to the children. We need to learn how they learn. And we need to, to learn how we can maximize their potential and their interest for the future. For every single child. And for me, as an expert working with DNA in healthcare, I see clear connection with how we personalize healthcare and how we can personalize education. And the way to do that, this next step in the future, is by using, for example, new technologies, because we need to use the data. What we do in healthcare is we sequence the DNA, and we, we look to the patient data of patients all over the world in order to know which patients need what, what, which treatment is best. We can do this for children too. We can, we can ask them questions. We can ask them feedback. We can even let them rate the lessons, what they learn. And what we can then do is we can measure. We can measure results from one child or the feedback from one child from an entire class, from a school, and schools all over the world. And if we do that, then we can truly personalize education based on the blueprint of one child and for every child. So, the future of education is not about children and letting them sit in classes they don't like. It's not about labeling them. The future of education is stimulating every single child in the world to stimulate greatness, to erase greatness, to stand up and let them develop greatness, to let them feel free, feel comfortable to chase their crazy dreams that change our future. So let's personalize education, one child at a time. 